the atom bomb was dropped there in Hiroshima, tested down in Alamogordo, and so, it brought Japan to its knees, and when they dropped the second one, they said, hey boss, that's it, you got it. <laughs> I would have too, but I said, I'll go first though. <laughs> and when they did that, they then had to take the ash, that was a byproduct of depleted uranium, it was a byproduct of the way that they were using them, because then they were trying to find out, could they split the atom? Now we understand that when you split the atom, you just open up another door. Whole new micro world. But then they didn't know. See, when I went to school, they had 92 elements on the table of elements. She showed you how young I is. Mm -hmm. But then they took all of that, and they dumped it out in a place called Palos Heights, Palos Hills. And if any of you from Chicago, now you know, I didn't know that. Yes, they did. And they dumped it some other places. Then later, they collected those tests that were done here at another hidden laboratory, and the one there, and he took it out to Colorado. And he dumped it in a big mound in Colorado. And after age it, orange, purple, green, and yellow. And after the first Gulf War, they didn't know what to do with all of that. So they took it out to a place called Colorado, and they dumped it in a big mound out there. And then they told all the other states, hey, we done messed up another, I'm sorry, we're dumping things into another state. Well, why don't you dump your byproducts there too? In fact, that person, you see, again, was it president of this? Okay, I'll stop paying. At any rate, that's where they dumped a lot of this mess. And do you know it's seven and a half miles from the Colorado River? Do you know that it is now leached into the Colorado River? And do you know where California and Las Vegas and all get their water from? Huh? Oh. Oh. And that, I think, is what you call the foundation for tap water in California. Wouldn't that be? And this is what I think two people, August people said you should be drinking, right? Now I did get the facts right at the beginning so we can find the truth. Was that correct? I can't hear you, was that correct? Oh, okay, we're together now, all right. So why would they tell you to drink something? Well, they got wonderful filtration plants. These filtration plants can take anything from anything, I guess, because they're saying they can take radiation out of the water, but I haven't seen any equipment out there that's doing that. I've seen them put fluorine, chloride, mercury, malcolm, and any other thing that they add to kill off what they call bacteria. You know the interesting thing about bacteria? They are species developed and they're programmed to do one thing, survive. So when you take a bacteria and you kill off the strain, it gets the message. And the next generation is now immune to that strain. This is why in Chicago's water supply and in uh, what's it, New Jersey's water supply, and so there are over 38 chemicals in there to try to kill off bacteria because every time you kill off one strain of the bacteria, the next generation mutates and now you've got to go to another chemical. Filtration is one thing, annihilation is another, substitution is another. And since these bacteria don't know that they can't, they do what we say, I'm sorry, what they say they can't. They mutate. Do you know you can take a lab specimen, bottle it, encapsulate it, airtight, put it on a shelf, and expose it just to energy from that, and that bacteria can spin it to anything else it wants to, even though it's bottled and labeled as one thing? Because there's some things on a frequency so big that nothing here, not even lead, can stop it from penetrating and the bacteria live on that kind of a vibration. They mutate. When we understand that we can get lightning with no thunder, mm -hmm. it used to be that a smart person traveling was aware of how to stay alive on Earth could t tell where a storm was by the lightning versus the thunder. How many of you remember how that worked? Let me see some hands. Okay. Well, again, you listen for the lightning, and you look for the thunder. Is that right? Is that right? All right. I love to play games, because I want you to think. I think learning can be fun. You said the endorphins go when you laugh, when somebody's dropping a hammer on your head. <laughs> it won't hurt as much, you'd be dead, but it'd be nice, because you left happy. 
At least let's leave here happy, or maybe let's fight to stay alive with a smile on our face, which is called justice. When you begin to take things and change them, you now can get scalar storms. Scalar storms started by Brookhaven, Isaac Hat, Lada, Hart, by which you can get lightning with no thunder. That's not natural. There's no ozone going to be generated from that action. Because the thunder was the clouds with moisture clashing together, the lightning rent them, and then the waters came down. When you get magenta and pink lightning with no thunder, that's scalar technology. Flashes and flickering. No thunder. That's man-made. That's genetically modified atmosphere. Just like the genetically modified food. And we're breathing that. Heart, started by Dr. Tesla one time. I'm not talking Teller, I'm sorry, Dr. Tesla was a good guy. Teller, William Teller, Edward Teller. Heart started being practiced in Wisconsin all the way back in what, about 19, knowingly about 1972 where they had some underground things there that they were testing a grid to see if they could manufacture energy to come above the surface a little bit. And then they moved that on a higher platform up to the Kona, Alaska. Remember when the Edmund Valdez sank up there and all that oil went on for almost a year and a half? How many of you remember that? You're young enough to go, oh, you some young people in there, right? And some wise people in there too, because I saw some of you were younger than me. So anyway, once it got up there, and all this Edmund Valdez, they had to get rid of all that oil. By the way, the guy never went to prison, never locked up, the company didn't pay off half of the damage it did, but it was a catastrophe. Seals of wildlife, things were dead. Pigeons and birds and penguins full of oil. Catastrophe. If I told you that it might be that that was not accidentally done, I know you begin to wonder about me, because I began to wonder about me a long time ago. But <laughs> I started wondering about them, and I knew if I could think when I'm thinking about them, then what must I be? So I was saved the time, I'm a neurotic individual. I have deep neurosis. My neurosis grows every time I turn on the radio, TV set, watch people, or watch a movie. Because most people and most things are psychotic. They're already crazy. And if you're around crazy people, you don't get a little body, you're already with them. <laughs> I still have spirituality. I don't know where there is. So, with my neurotic self, I start looking at things. And I don't just take something that Murtaugh, Murdoch controls, like the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and everything else. Do you believe what they say? No. Controlled by one man from England who didn't like what CNN and didn't start at Fox. We just got on your presidential elect. We just got on Reverend Jesse Jackson, Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson. Anything come out of Fox is against you. Take half what they say and then go on and do something important for the rest of the day. <laughs> because if you're spiritual, they got nothing to do for you. Let's go back to where we were. When you begin to understand what happened up there. They had to move heavy transportation equipment up there to get rid of all that oil thing. All kind of people made money to clean up that mess. But in the meantime, emerged heart. And in the meantime, came the, uh, uh, the, Aleutian, the Aleutian Islands project, which was hidden because everybody knew all that heavy equipment up there was to clean up the Edmund Valdez mess. Mm. And maybe they did. Uh -huh. Maybe. You have some storms. Go back now with me, because I'm going to move back and forth in time with you. That's good, because it makes the right and left brain work together. I'm trying to get some of mine to work anyway, so help me. When you had the solution project up there, there was a storm that came through, some hurricanes that swept through there twice in one year. No storms had ever come through the Aleutian Islands like that, but they did. People said, what in the world is going on up there again? And they wiped them out. Then later on in the year, they came through again and wiped them out. Did you know that they were busy building prison camps up there? Changing tape, Dr. Blair. Changing tape. Building prison camps up there, and what happened was the camps that they were building had no heating. 
facilities in them. Up in the Aleutian Islands, it can drop to 35 degrees below zero. I wonder who is going to be living in those camps. Mm. <laughs> Storm came through to the foundation, ruined those camps. They built them again. Second storm came through. Nine months later, wiped them out again. They stopped the Aleutian Islands project. Now, that might have been an accident. Might have been justification. Might have been whatever you want. I like to think it was somebody up there liking it. Or somebody up there who isn't getting honored, understanding that that was less than honorable and they ought to be taught a lesson. But nobody made the two commitments to the equating of what really happened there because nobody knew about the Aleutian Islands Project. After that, they started what was called the HARP Project, High Frequency Active Aurora Research Project up in Lakona, Alaska, in which they put 36 towers, <coughs> 3,600 feet, I'm sorry, 150 feet in a rectangular pattern to emit billions, billions, billions of watts of energy in electrification form, electrical discharges. They said that there was a number of reasons why they were doing that. They said one was for communication over the horizon because one of the problems they were having, and it's always military application for this, was that they could not communicate with platoons of soldiers over the horizon because the signal would go up. They needed to go up and then down so they communicate with the troops. Interesting enough, that's one of the things that HARP was done for. Another thing they said they wanted to do was to blast a hole into the ionosphere. Why did they want to blast a hole into the ionosphere? Simple, because they wanted to send up a signal that when the space shuttles and other things would be launched, they would not have to run fossil fuel to get the propulsion mechanism out, and they could save that for later usage. So they were going to burn a hole ahead of these crafts launching, so they wouldn't have to use the fossil fuel, and then they could use that in free space, outer space. And they said it could be used for possibly other means too. Well, it might have been doing two things, but that's not the real reason they built it. There's seven reasons why they built HARP. Like there's seven reasons why they're doing a lot of things they're doing. One of the deeper reasons was that they wanted to communicate with submarines over the horizon and under the horizon, and they wanted to chart to see if they could find gold and other precious minerals in the earth because the signal from a satellite was so intense it could go in there. They wanted to see if they could find cities and other substructures under the earth. They wanted to be able to modulate weather, and they wanted to be able to control mines. Huh? That part, I didn't see any of that listed in those first journals and those white papers that those scientists visited out, because what does that have to do with the price of tea and the price of gas at the pump. Mm -hmm. Modulates everything. So what actually happened was that they used them to ping submarines and to pong submersibles. Ping pong means that these things that they were setting up underneath the ocean from these aircraft carriers and these submarines was to find other things underneath the ocean and it continued this wage-long battle of controlling the ocean because the only reason the United States is not wiped off the map from the power that Russia has and Iran has and China has and Japan has is because of its navy and that's why all the money that comes out is diverted to the United States Navy. You want to know why? Because that's what saved the United States from invasion military-wise. Notice how I said military -wise. Seven oceans, seven fleets, and a submersible fleet that you don't even count on. Simply meaning this. The United States has a navy in all oceans with submersibles that you can't see capable of taking out an entire continent in one hour by missile firings. So no matter what happens to the mainland, as long as the navy's out there taking orders, the United States is safe from direct invasion because they can retaliate to any country on earth in a matter of minutes. How many saw that movie Red? What was that one that had Denzel Washington in it? Uh, what was it? I can't hear you. Oh, Red Eye Tobey.